You're watching the Garden State. So last week we reported on a guy named Al Lupiano from Colonia, New Jersey, who believes that people are getting brain tumors because of Colonia High School. Him, his wife, and his sister have all had brain tumors, and his sister recently passed, actually. It's awful. And the the story got a ton of response. A lot of people were reaching out and saying, you know, I know the family. I can connect you. And we actually have the opportunity to speak to Al tonight yep. to hear his side of the story, to hear what he thinks is going on in the high school. And I am just so excited to spread the word about this because this could be big if if, if something comes of it. And I think if, if there's anything we can do on this podcast to shed light on interesting serious situations like this, we should do our part. Oh yeah. Yeah. We were talking to the family and we're like, we want you guys to just share your side of the story. Um, what are you guys working on? What are you guys doing? And you know, we're honored to have Al come onto the pod tonight calling in. Yeah. Very exciting. It's very exciting. Um, and if you guys ever hear of a story where you feel like it needs more attention, you can always reach out to us on Instagram and our DMS. You can also join the discord for the conversation. Or there's always the option of sending us an email. We do read our emails, and yes. Appreciate all those emails. We've been getting a lot. You want to get into this phone call? He should be calling in any second now. Yep. Hey, Al, how you doing tonight, man? Am I calling any better? Oh, that's way better. Okay. Technology sometimes. (laughs) Ah, yeah. You know what? It happens. And we were, you know, we we were like, we started getting nervous. We're like, is there something wrong with our, our setup? I'm going to just say... Hey, my kids might call me a boomer, but I'm at least decent with technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to, to you sure. know, to call us. And, you know, last week we, we posted that video about your situation, and it seemed like a lot of people were very interested in what's going on. And uh, I think I got a half a million views of people just wow. in- interested in what's going on in Colonia. Um, and before we started, we wanted to see how are you feeling personally? We know you're being affected by this and, and your family's been affected directly. Um, so I had, uh, I've been dealing with my brain tumor over 20 years. So you have good days. We have bad days. For the most part, it's, is what it is. Um, this process of doing the research has not been the easiest thing in the world. So it's pretty much been all encompassing of any spare time I have for about seven months now. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do only because it just keeps bringing back uh, old memories and, and kind of like opening up a wound day after day after day. Mm, but wow. it, it's what I have to do to get answers and uh, made my sister a promise. I wouldn't stop until I got an answer and that's what I'm doing. Wow. So, so let's go back just a little bit here because uh, for those that are listening that may not know, there have been, many people affected within Colonia because of uh, what you're assuming is a link to the high school. Do you know the total number of people right now that, that have this rare brain tumor? As of tonight, we hit 90. Wow. Wow. So are people coming out of the woodworks now saying, Hey, I've got the same issue. Yeah. So it it took me five months to get up to 15 and the 15 was, was just following breadcrumbs and seeing where it took me. Um, Once, my sister had declined to a point where she needed all my attention. I kind of put it on the side. And when she did pass is when I really said, I, I need to go public. Um, I may look like a fool for doing so if it turns out to be nothing, but I need the help of social media to get the word out. And once it went to Facebook, it just started increasing day after day after day. Um, once a couple of news, um, uh, ran on, on a couple of news stations. Um, the cases started coming in nationally because a lot of people left New Jersey and weren't aware of what was going on locally. So uh, I've really got a lot of phone calls over the last week. And uh, as of right now, we, we just hit 90. Wow. Well, that's incredible. And I hope that us sharing this maybe gets you a few more people connected because to su- you know to suffer unknowingly you know from something that might have been malfeasance there you know who knows what the situation uh, fully is uh-huh. but to suffer unknowingly and then to find out no there's people just like me you know that yep. have gone through the same thing must be uh comforting to those that are suffering that they're not alone um but my, the the real question we wanted to start with with you tonight is so how did you make this connection? Because obviously it's very, it's one in 100,000, right? That someone would get this particular brain tumor. Correct. Correct. And then, so it, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. 
No, go ahead. Finish. Your no, so I, I was just gonna say. Um, so you, your wife, and your sister all have this had the same brain tumor, and and then so you went out and you started to ask around, or or how, where, take us back to the beginning of where this all began, because you said twenty years ago. So I was diagnosed 1999 at the ripe old age of 27. Uh, oh. Most people that have acoustic neuromas are 50, 60, 70 years old. They're very slow growing. Uh, they estimate about a millimeter a year. And I was in the hospital for something unrelated, and they had to do an MRI. And lo and behold, they found a gigantic 36-millimeter brain tumor. Wow. My God. Um, it wasn't the cause of my issues at the time, but there was alarm that you have this very large brain tumor and you're only 27. So I started my journey asking questions and trying to research all I could and kept discovering that these are rare. And someone my age with something that large, I had roughly 36 years of growth in, and I was 27 years old, and I had had an MRI five years earlier and it wasn't there. So even my doctor was kind of like, wow, you know, I don't see a lot of these cases, but even yours is rare within these cases. We don't see them your age and we don't see them as big as yours. So we did treatment, we moved forward, and I just chalked it up to it was just my time to have something, and then I, I moved, moved forward. And I did the best I could to make the best of it, and I kind of became a counselor in the field and guiding people on their path, saying, you know, there is a tomorrow, and, and there is hope, and, and don't give up, and here's treatment, and that's yeah. what I've done for 20 years. Wow. So when my sister was diagnosed in August... Um, we knew immediately the prognosis was not going to be good. Um, she was in the medical field herself, and what we initially had thought was a benign meningioma turned out to be the worst of the worst, stage uh, grade four glioblastoma multiforme. Hmm. Um, it has a very, very low survival rate. I, they estimate it's about 1%, and most people don't see two years, let alone five or ten. Two hours later, we had received the results from my wife's MRI. Now, she wow. had gone only because she was losing her hearing, and I had pushed her to finally go get a hearing exam. But lo and behold, two hours after we get my sister's diagnosis, I received the raw data on my wife, and I'm able to read the MRI report, and there it is. She's got a 30-millimeter tumor, same as mine. Wow. And it just unbelievable. Hit, it just floored us. So you said that the you said this was you were twenty seven originally personally when you when they discovered it and it had yep. like a thirty thirty three years worth of growth really is what it looked like. And you had gotten thirty a, plus years, yep. Thirty plus years and you had gotten a scan you said four years before that? Five years earlier so and there was nothing there. Within five years over thirty you know, years worth of growth happened within your Correct. Brain. That is insane. Correct. And that's wow. why even my doctor was shocked, saying that that's very, very fast. We don't see these grow that quickly. So that's why it was, we needed to do something soon. He said, at this pace, it could be life-threatening if we don't deal with it now. Wow. So as soon as we posted uh, this, we well, before we even posted it, we, we did a lot of research. And uh, Josh was reading around some Facebook pages. And we were just trying to, to fully get a grip on what it, the situation is. And we began to see a lot of different theories kind of swirling around. Josh, did, was there one that mm -hmm. you wanted to mention specifically? Yeah, so we got over a thousand, we got thousands of comments on the TikTok of a bunch of people like sharing their theories and thoughts on like what's causing this. And one comment that a lot of people were talking about was saying that there was a rock in one of the classes that had radiation in it. And then they had to close the school for a day. Um, do you recall that happening or does that have a link yeah. to this? So... Knowing what I know about primary brain tumors, and I want to just make sure we're clear, I'm not only talking about cancers. I want to focus, these are primary brain tumors. And I did that for a reason, because of their rarity. So knowing what I know about primary brain tumors, there's really only one link that scientists all agree on, and that's ionizing radiation. They learned this from years and years of data after World War II, Wow. They learned this after Chernobyl. So the scientists all agree we've got really solid evidence of what nuclear radiation can do to a human body. There's a lot of supposition about other contaminants and vinyl chloride and PCBs and on and on and on, but they're all anecdotal. They're not really proven. We have theories, but nothing solid. So I started doing digging on specific terms on the Internet, and one of them was Colonia, Woodbridge Township, and radiation. Lo and behold, the article came up from 1997 
which stated there had been a uranium ore called uranakite. Sometimes it's called pitch blend. They had found a large grapefruit-sized rock in the school that turned out to be uranium ore. Wow. And it, would ju- it just hit me that maybe we're going down the right path. One may not be enough, but it's very suspicious. It's very interesting that we did find a link where I know radiation can cause brain tumors, and now we have radiation in the school. And I wanted to just keep digging down that path to say, maybe we're on to something. Maybe mm. that might not be it, but that might be the tip of the iceberg. Man, this is this sounds like the makings of like a an incredible documentary. Uh, I mean, that's that's just insane that you were you were googling and you came up with that. That's crazy. Well, if you're into conspiracy theories, yeah, here's well, where it goes next. A little bit, actually. <laughs> so I couldn't wrap my head around where does a high grade, potentially high grade uranium ore rock come from? It doesn't make sense. They're not natural in New Jersey. You might find smaller pieces, but you're not going to find a large grapefruit sized rock of black it looks like a black crystal very very unique it looks like something from outer space it doesn't you don't find it in new jersey that led me to number two there's a secret sampling plant sometimes it's called a landfill about 11 miles from the high school and it was involved in the making of the nuclear bombs as part of the manhattan project that landfill is called the manhattan it's called the middlesex sampling plant sometimes referred to as the Middlesex middle Landfill. They used to import very high-grade uranium ore from the Congo. And the reason you do that is uranium ore has very low percentages of uranium. So you need to extract the pure uranium to enrich it to make a bomb. They wanted the best they could find. You go to the Congo when you want to find the best uranium. So they were bringing it into this facility in addition to plutonium, beryllium, lots of really nasty stuff. And they were experimenting to see which one had the greatest yield per pound of ore. And when they finished experimenting, it kind of got thrown in the backyard, so to speak. So there were tons of this material on this property in the 40s and 50s. They started cleaning it up and started separating what they considered clean from dirty fill slash soil. And that's when things went awry. They started losing track of the clean fill versus the dirty fill. So they moved it off to a secondary site a little bit north called Middlesex Landfill North. And that's when they lost track of the dirty fill. They had records that an asphalt company had taken some away. Then they had records that locals started coming on the site with pickup trucks and carrying the dirt away. And the government got a little concerned and they said, we need to get that dirt back. And they just closed the records and said, we got it all back. It's good. So now I started asking myself, is it a possibility that some of that fill from 10 miles away was used in the construction of the high school in 1967? And if that's a possibility, that stone that was found on the property may have been kicked up by a student walking around the grounds, saw an interesting looking black rock and brought it into school. Wow. There may be lots of those rocks on the property. Oh, my I don't God. Know. That, that is, is but that's insane. one of the things that I'm wondering. Is this the tip of the iceberg? And maybe it does make sense that there's a potential issue for radiation. It doesn't Don't sound know. it doesn't sound that crazy. It actually sounds very, very sound believable. Crazy. No, that sounds These super things happen around the country yeah. all the time. So the one thing that, that we were struck with was the fact that three family members could have a, a you know a situation yeah. happen that's one in one hundred thousand, which is a you know a statistical anomaly. And Correct. you know, it doesn't sound that crazy what you're saying right now. When it you really think doesn't. something something had to happen, something had to cause this. It's not just like this happens every day to people. And Correct. that's that is a very, very interesting theory. Is there anything that uh, our listeners could potentially look up if they want to read more about that? Is there anything you'd recommend us? Uh, well, if you want to read the article yourself, um, very easy search terms, Colonia and Geiger, and okay. it'll bring you to the 1997 article. Um, and if you want to see anything on the Middlesex sampling plant, it's it's been written about for probably 50, 60 years now. New York Times did a big retrospective on cleaning up America's nuclear past. So there's a lot of articles on this. It's still sitting there. It's a super fun site waiting to be cleaned up. So it's well known in Middlesex Borough that that place exists. Um, wow. is, it a, is it a cause? I, I don't know. But as a scientist... You chase every breadcrumb, and if the breadcrumb leads to a loaf of bread, 
you dig into it. Yeah. And I, that's what we do. I'm not going to drop a breadcrumb here and say it's not worth exploring. It's worth exploring until it doesn't pan out. It's really good. And we're still digging. Yep. Yep. And, you know, one thing I we failed to mention on our intro is do you want to share your, your background pr- uh, professionally? Because I think it, it adds sure, to, sure. The, to the situation a bit. So I graduated from Rutgers um, in environmental sciences with a minor in industrial hygiene, safety, engineering. Um, I did a lot of classes in, in epidemiology and toxicology. Um, I then worked for the U.S. EPA as a hazmat responder for about 10 years. So I've been all over the country. I've seen everything. I've seen how people can hide things and how can how they can lose track of toxins and, and wastes. Um, I then floated around several industries, uh, worked in a steel mill, worked for Honeywell and Allied Signal and Lockheed Martin. And uh, for the last 18 years, um, I worked for the largest oil spill cleanup company in the nation. Um, I work as a safety engineer for them. Uh, we were involved in the Deepwater Horizon cleanup. You probably have seen that on the news once mm-hmm. or twice. That took place in 2010. So I've always been involved in the environmental field. And to coin a phrase we use in the marine industry, when this hit home, it, it hit me in, in, the, in my wheelhouse, mm-hmm. so to speak. So I immediately heard bells and whistles go off in my head that we know too many people that have brain tumors. And if you add the three of us up with just some family members that we had associations with that gave us stories, there's too many. Yeah. Um, the high school's not big enough that we should have the number of cases we have. Uh, you know the percentages. Your yeah. readers have, uh, have looked it up. It's 0.001% for Man. an acoustic neuroma. That's and I insane. have 14 on my list. Oh, my goodness. Unreal. So... I guess the question then becomes, what is the next step here? What, you know, what, what is the, the hopeful outcome? Is it that the town would begin to research this? I know they said they're, they're open to it. Uh, what would be your hope here for the next step? We had hoped that the feds and the state would come rushing in and say, we're here to help. Um, unfortunately, we've not received that friendly welcome, we thought. Um, they're receptive. They hear what we're saying. But there's a lot of, we'll get... We'll get back to you. And hmm. the mayor and I have been lockstep on this. He's been actually my greatest ally from day one. He said, whatever you need, I'm here. And the two of us have been getting a little frustrated saying that we're running out of time, so to speak, before people are up in arms and storming the castle, so to speak, with pitchforks and, 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 and billy clubs. So, He's basically stated, if we can't get the feds to listen and we can't get the state to listen, I'm prepared to move on my own and I'll bring in my own contractor and we'll start. Wow. Um, and I think it's, it's a fantastic thing that he's willing to do this. Um, we have spring break coming up in a couple of weeks. That's a perfect opportunity to get a team of scientists in there to really do a deep dive and make sure our children that are in this school are not being harmed. Well, that was my, um, that was going to be I, my next question. Do you think they should be shutting yeah. down the high school now or are all these cases from so. like years ago? They are. And that's what I've tried to explain to people. I said, this is not an acute exposure. This is a long-term chronic exposure. So is there any harm in, in continuing to go to school for a few more days, a few more weeks? No, I, I see none. Um, my nieces are in the school. I have my cousin's children in the school and we're not pulling them out. I I don't see the need to do that. Um, but I don't think it's wise to ignore the problem and pick it up two, three, four years down the road. The sooner we know, the better we can react. And I'm not sure if, if it's even there. I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful that it's not a problem and maybe they can learn something from what happened in the past, but God help us if the problem still exists. Yeah. And that's what we're all afraid of. Yep. Absolutely. So, so even you're saying with long-term exposure, if, if they did over, let's say spring break going in, they're like, Hey, we're seeing some things that are concerning. What's the next step then? Is it, is it to knock down the high school? Is that, does that become an area that where people just don't enter into until it can be That's above my pay grade? Okay. Got it. Got it. You know, at that point, we, we turn it over to the, to the people with lots of letters and acronyms next to their <laughs> names, and we ask them, yeah. what do you think? Um, I'm a grunt, you know, so my job was basically to, 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 with, uh, to stand up to a promise I made to my sister, which is to dig into this problem and find out why it happened to us. And as I uncovered more and more people, it expanded to why did it happen to all of us? And that's all I want. I just want answers. I want yeah. someone to tell me that 
my numbers are wrong. I would love to hear that. Mm -hmm. I would love for someone to look at my numbers and say, these are silly. It's not a problem. Great. We all go about our lives. Al looks a little sillier. I can live with that. Yeah. But if someone looks at the numbers and say, we have a problem, my question is going to be, can we fix it? And is it ongoing? That's really what I want to know. Yeah. Well, it's it's absolutely unbelievable. And, and we knew this was a crazy story before we even got you on the phone. But now that you're sharing this, it's just mind blowing. And um, yep. I mean, I can't even believe it. Josh, was there anything you, you wanted to ask before we close it out? No, that was about it. We just uh, wish you the best of luck, Al. And well, thank you. We're, we're from the area. Like I grew up in Clark and Josh grew up in Cranford. So like we're very familiar with the area. You guys are our neighbors. So whatever you guys need from us, just please reach out. Feel free. Uh, we'd love to help in any way possible. Yep. Well, you've helped just by airing this tonight. Um, the more we get the word out, the more people are contacting me, the better the data that I can hand over to the experts. And maybe they can learn something and prevent this from happening ever again. Absolutely. Well, Al, we'll, uh, we'll get this up as soon as we can. And like Josh said, if there's anything else we can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, and, and we've, we spoke to your niece. Your whole family was very, very uh, sweet to us. And awesome. if, there's, if there's anything we can do, that's why we're here. And uh, we wish you all the best, man. Thank you. And if you want an update in the future, don't hesitate oh, to reach yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. Oh, we definitely will. Great. All right. Have a good night. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night, Al. Bye. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye. Wow. Well, that was really awesome to speak to Al. And I mean, what a well-spoken guy who has tons of information on the topic. Bro, and so much of it makes sense. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And like, it, it, it's not something you hear and be like, wow, that's way out and that's crazy. No, like that made a lot of sense. And I can't wait to dig into these articles and just keep looking. And I would love to help him just yeah. find the source of this. So thank you, Al, for coming on. Dude. All I could think that entire conversation was the whole time he was speaking, I'm like, this is going to be a Netflix documentary. It has to it's be, yeah. It's so unbelievable mm -hmm. to hear all the details. And we spoke to him for 20 minutes. I mean, that that could easily be an hour. We could have done a longer interview. Oh, yeah, we could have gone I didn't want to keep him on the phone all night. Yeah. But, I mean, what an amazing... Uh, the interesting story and uh, hopefully they get to the bottom of it 100 percent. and i don't know uh, you know i should have asked them i don't know if that means a lawsuit like if if they do find a link is there a lawsuit involved and mm -hmm. uh, yeah he might have you know i don't know if he would have known the answer to that but thank you to al for calling in and we'll do whatever we can to share the story that's uh you know in our own backyard to think that this is going yeah, on such a crazy story and we have friends that went to colonia high yeah dude we have friends in colonia high right now like it's insane <sighs> so Insane. I guess we got to move on to the news, but uh, that was, we'll never get an interview that good, that good again. That man. was insane. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Shout out to the whole family we've been in contact with. You guys have been so kind and open to sharing. So we appreciate that. And we're just here to help you guys. So let's move on to the rest of the news for the night. <laughs> how are we going to top that? <laughs> I don't know how to move on to news after that because the, the news we have is kind of ridiculous. But <laughs> these stories, yeah. Um, Man, what a guy. That's so cool. Wow. And then the other thing was, he's a Jersey guy, went to Rutgers. Like, it's just such an interesting story. So prayers to Al and his family. Al, we got you, bro. Anything you need, hit Amazing. us up. We got you.